two upcoming artists and producers. It's Swerve Beats here from BeatStars.com. If you are unfamiliar with me, I did a beat for the 85 South show for their most recent show coming up here on, well, actually tomorrow, tomorrow the 28th for their Mobile Alabama show. Check it out. Mobile Alabama, yeah, Mobile Alabama. I also did a beat for Wild and Out, one of my most watched videos, as you can see here. I also did a beat with the baby. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but it happened months ago. But he knocked out this guy. Uh, you can see his name down there. I ain't gonna say his name, but you can. Y'all know the video. Y'all look at this nigga the baby. That nigga the baby in here talking some shit. He walking up on me and shit like he about to do something. But you don't do. I love doing what I do. I'll show you new marketing strategies to help you get DMs like this from the 85 South Show. I will show you how to build a strong marketing campaign to get your timeline or your notifications to look like this or like this. It's not the amount of views, it's who's viewing. The amount of views doesn't really, it, and it matters, but it doesn't really matter as much as people think it does. Who's viewing? You don't mind the producer. Like, that, that, come on, son. You don't mind, you don't mind. Look like this. As you can see, that's a totally different post. Or like this, I will show you how to get these, these celebrities' attention to get them to watch, to draw them into your content. Like, why are you, why are you worth watching? Oh yeah, my bad, Carlos. Bro, I got you. I had to, I had to cross out your, e I had to cross out your email. It can't be just giving that out all willy nilly. You feel me? Or to have it look like this. Also, I do want to give a special shout out to Miss Cindy Cowhand. She is such an awesome person. If you do not know who Miss Cindy Cowhand is, here's her page. You can go follow her, read about her, all that awesome stuff. If any of that interests you, then stay tuned because I drop a lot of free gems and you don't want to miss a thing. Trust me. Trust me. So go ahead, hit that notification bell. Go ahead and subscribe, like the video, leave a comment and see which one of it, oh, wait. Which part was, I don't know, helpful for you? <laughs> it's Swerve Beats. Let's take a ride. First order of business, how and why you should protect your music. Truth is, you don't need to worry about that as much as you think you do. You can go to copyright.gov if you want to, you know, have some official paperwork saying you own the on the product or own the song or whatever. Um, but of course, you're gonna have people who steal. You know what I'm saying? You might have like a, a amateur videographer that may steal your song or 
you know, because they don't know the rules yet. You know, they just looking to get their project complete. They're not, they don't know the rules. And all the time they don't, they don't search for the information. And because they don't search for the information, it could lead to legal issues. But to be honest, you don't really need to worry about it. I would say if you do gather your music, you want to gather like at least 10 to 15 tracks within an album. And if you're posting it to copyright.gov, they're going to charge you the same price. So why not? just don't don't just submit one have have multiple ready that is copyright.gov you can register all your copyrights for your songs there second myths and facts that amateurs have when entering the music business let's see producers don't make money <laughs> a lot of people will sleep to be honest look i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep it real with y'all i have had if I tell the chick that I'm a music producer, they, um, yeah, they ghost me pretty much. But I will show you here. I'm doing okay as a as a producer. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, just earnings from just small small earnings. You know, like we we make bread. Like I sell my tracks anywhere. The MP3s are nineteen ninety nine. And my wave files are thirty four nine or thirty nine ninety nine. They're basically twenty and forty dollars. So you know, and the let's see, exclusives they are two hundred a piece. If they if if it's just if they want the track to themselves, they have to pay me two hundred dollars to use that. Um, and a lot of artists do want to be the only artist with that song, or you know, it is. They don't want that many artists with the song, so they go ahead and buy the exclusive rights for it, which I am going to get out of because it limits the maximum amount of money you can take with it. Because just because an artist pays two hundred dollars for a beat, um, that doesn't mean that they know how to market the beat or the song after they get done with it. That doesn't necessarily mean that they know what to do with it, and a lot of them don't know what to do with it. You know, and I've this is my personal opinion. I feel like most of them. Ha that bought those beats should have taken off by now. I basically gave them gold, you know? Um, but I'm gonna have to sweeten up the package for them now. Um, I got a list of over like 8,500 contacts that they can, you know, send their music out to now. You know, I have to, I'm gonna have to try to help them push that music, especially if they bought it from me. A lot of producers won't do that, but I like building personal relationships with my producers um with my artists um to to like have some longevity so they come back and and shop with me this is just one of them and a lot of them don't have a paypal so they would rather use chime or um what's the other one cash app or they may just send it straight to straight to my paypal because they already have the email address they don't have to go through my website you know what I'm saying? They already have all that information. So some of these sales, a lot of these sales ain't showing up because I've already, you know, I get the money in another uh, another place because I've built a relationship with them. And, you know, we exchange the cash app information or chime information or whatever. It's 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 a no brainer. It's really it's really fun, to be honest. I really love doing this. Um. I used to dream about the days that I would actually get to do this for money, but I don't do it for money. I love doing it, but I just happen to make money doing it, you know? So another one of the questions is, what can I do to protect my music if it gets stolen? That's like saying, okay, say you were going to open up a restaurant. Are you going to focus more on people coming to rob your restaurant? the dine and dashers or are you going to focus on catering to the people that actually paid for their food you know i don't to be honest some expect somebody to steal your music because you're dope <laughs> expect someone to steal your music get over it somebody gonna steal it now what just make just make music that's really all you have to focus on don't worry about who's gonna steal it people have stolen my beats and you know how far they got <laughs> 
Exactly. You don't know their name. You know mine, but you don't know theirs. Don't worry about who's stealing your music. I could actually show you the video, but I'm not. We don't get no we don't get no shine to no suckers. None. And a lot of them will rap over tagged beats. This is actually what the person did. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop here. This is my website, swervebeats.com. Um, or you could do beatstars dot beatstars dot com slash swervebeats slash tracks. That is also that also links you to this player you're about to see now. But if you want to become part of my email list, to the insider group, um, I will even I will my email list. My email list knows. Like I send out some nice little stuff every now and then. I will send like a couple contacts out just just saying just as a thank you for you know shopping with me i do that every now and then just so they have somewhere to shop their music to because i can't i can't personally work with or be around or talk to the art all the artists every single time every single day you know i try to give them that information and let them do with it whatever they please if they use it cool if they don't cool i'm gonna keep it moving you feel me but anyway, this is my contact form um, or to sign up for my email address or sign up to my email list. Sorry. And you can fill that out there. You can check the box if you want to receive email. Oh, so I got to state that. So if if you do sign up, make sure you check your spam and junk folders and important folders. It, it'll come directly from me. It'll say Swerve Beats. But just make sure you got your, make sure you check your spam and and your junk folder just in case it doesn't show up in your inbox. Anywho, that guy took the track and he basically, well, you hear the tag. Not that tag. That's my producer tag, but to protect my music, I I use that. It said, hurry up and buy. That actually came from, um, matter of fact, y'all tell me where that came from. A lot of people know where that came from. Hurry up and buy. But I put that in there to let people know that joker didn't buy this beat. <laughs> That's why I put it in there. And so if that person tries to rap over a tag beat, it shows that they have not invested in themselves. And most serious artists know, all serious artists, artists and producers know, if you're rapping on a tag beat, you don't take this seriously. You're doing it for fun. Get out of the way. Because we do this for real. Move. Let's see, label versus independent. To be honest, you don't even need a label. You do not, I repeat, you do not need a record label. Most people will take that label and they will take the offer from the label, not knowing that they can do this all independently. You can do this, you can, but a lot of people are afraid to build. Yeah, a label is cool because they have more net networks. They have more people in their network to shop your music too. But you have to also remember, you're not the only artist on that label. Well, if you go to an independent label, that would be better. And I'm, I was speaking more in the terms of Atlantic Records, you know, a huge label, but they got 109 artists on the roster. Every artist isn't going to get that, that shine that they need. They're going to pick someone who has some dope music or the dopest out of the 109 and push that artist because they're getting traction. They're getting comments. They're getting more engagement than the rest of the artists are the types of deals labels give out um i would say the 360 deal 360 deal is basically a loan like you go to a bank and get a loan for a hundred thousand you got to pay the hundred thousand back and it depends on you how how fast you could do that but i mean just by the music you put out but a lot of times it's I don't know. I can't say because I'm not. I'm not signed. I'm independent. I would not choose. I don't want a loan from no label. I don't want to have to pay that back. I'm trying to keep all my money. I'm trying to keep all of it. 
What's another one? Do I need a label to make semi-passive income? You do not need a label. I just showed you. I'm doing this independently. You can do that as an artist too. As far as the artist, we can speak of, of with the artist. Well, let's see. Let's speak on the artist side. So as an artist, after you, let's say you book a show, a local show at a bar. You know, it may be small, but you can book they book a small show and to get people to remember you you want to have merchandise especially if you had a dope song that's for you gotta have a dope song a lot of people a lot of people okay i I've, I've seen this guys like a rapper will book a show at a country bar bruh why why would you do that's not even your audience they listen to country music they got on cowboy boots with the spurs why are you trying to rap in front of them son like that's stupid terrible marketing strategy but they don't know that they don't know their audience they don't know who's listening to their music you know it, what they should know if they're a rapper they should know who's listening to their music you should only book places book shows at places that play rap music hip-hop music you know and if you're not versatile all if all you do is talk about game banging and everybody ain't no game banger a lot of us older people we don't game bang we out here trying to create generational wealth we ain't we ain't no game banging what what ain't nobody listening to that that's that's their second mistake they too old and they trying to they always talk about gang gang life you know what i'm saying that ain't it. Everybody don't want to hear that. And that's not that's not going to be placed in a TV show, which is another way you can make money. It's TV sync. Um, they sync your music to a commercial or TV show or something with video. Basically, like what I'm doing now, I'm syncing my music to my voice. But guess who gets this stream money if I put it on YouTube? But... um. I get that stream money because I have my music playing in the background. You know, it's 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 many ways out here that you can really make money. You just have to connect and network with people and learn. It's super easy. It's nowhere near as hard as people may think it is. This is super easy. And you can definitely skyrocket if you have this information. I promise. As far as marketing, hmm, I will say the best thing is social media. Being social on social media. That would be your best bet. Do like remixes or inner contests or challenges, something so that more eyes will be on your content. Another helpful thing is hashtags. That's how 85 South Show found me. I used hashtags that were pertaining to the 85 South show. I took one of their flyers. I made my own video, which, which is very helpful. You don't have to find someone to make your video for you. I make my videos on my phone myself. Guess who get the return on that? My, <laughs> me, I get the return on all of that. Cause I did it myself. I don't have to split it with anyone else. I'm independent. I do this by myself. You know, this, I just use hashtags. Basically, I use hashtags for my story, and I get blue checks daily. So, with that being said, I could, which I I did actually get. I, Instagram actually reached out to me to be a influencer because I'm driving a lot of traffic to my to my page just from using the right hashtags hashtags are very helpful there's another one was ill mine in this one or was he in the last one ill mine is a very dope influential producer in the producer community yeah that was him on the last one you know he's super cool super super cool i get blue checks in my looking at my story all the time because i know what to say and a lot of these are returners you know a lot of them come back and keep watching my story. Why? Because I'm entertaining. That's why. I'm cool. <laughs>
she's such a sweet lady. If you don't know who Cindy Cowell is, I mean, Common, sorry. Here she is here. You can go follow her page there. As you can see, what you can see what she does here. Chicka chicka ching. She's super sweet, super nice lady. And you get the, and here's some of my hashtags. Y'all actually get to see the hashtags that I used. You know what I'm saying? Boom, got that reply. But what a lot of people don't know is I've been talking to Carlos for a little minute now. So he did me, he DM me on Twitter from the first beat I did for them. This is, this ain't the first beat that I did for these guys. If you have not seen, if you have not checked out any of my beats, I did one for, I did one for Wild and Out, which actually really brought a lot of traffic to me. Mm, it's on YouTube. I'll actually put the the link to that to these to those. <laughs> I'll put the link to those videos down below. You can check them out. Feel free to check them out. And here we go. I added it to my story with the hashtags there. I don't know if you can see. No, you can't see it. Ain't no way. But now you can see the hashtags there. Boom, that looks engaging. If your post doesn't look engaging, ain't nobody gonna come look at it. You feel me? And then, as you can see, they added me to their story. It asked me to add it to my story after they added it. Boom, 85 South Show mentioned you in their story. It's super simple. This is not as hard as people think it is. You just have to build relationships with people, to be honest. This is actually a super dope artist. Me and him actually kind of clowning in the comments. Well, DM, but he's a super dope artist. Go check him out. He is fire. We're gonna have some some dope work coming. I know it. And I think I showed that one already. But this is, I mean, it's I'm doing this like clockwork. I do this for real. This is fun to me. So since I love doing it, I wanna continue pushing everything out there. I love doing this resources needed you need you a computer first of all a good one well if you want to do videos like these i would say you would have to use something like a a gaming computer you're definitely going to need a gaming computer if you're trying to make beats and post or will stream while you make beats you're definitely going to need something like a gaming computer but if you want to just make beats you can um and then you just do a voiceover if you want just talk about the things that you did during the video but this right here is quicker for me I don't want to have to make two separate videos I want to do this all in one one shot I don't want to have to do two but definitely gonna need a computer and Fruity Loops or FL Studio is what they call it now I think we're up to FL Studio 20.6 and I've been I've been playing around with fruity loop since i was in middle school i'm my birthday is monday march 2nd so i'll I'm, I'm about 30 i'm going to turn 30 and let's see yeah i can't even calculate how many years ago that was i've been out of middle school too long i didn't drop out of middle school now don't don't get it twisted i'm smarter than that i'm smarter than that don't get it twisted now but yeah i've been playing with fruity loops since i've been in middle school let's 13 14 years old my dad bought me a drum set when i was four years old and everybody on my mom my, my dad's side of the family either sings or plays an instrument it's always been a part of me and i have not always really honed in on my gift but once i started catering to my gift and noticing people really grooving with it and liking it that made me want to do it even more and now it's it's like the thing to do it's super cool and people don't know it's cool yet, which is funny, but they'll catch up. It's cool. Creating a marketing plan and budget for your music. That's all on you. To be honest, um, I would say you're going to have to break it up into sections. You're definitely going to have to break it up into sections because if you don't, you'll, you'll basically... You'll basically run yourself crazy if you don't try to if you try to do everything at one time. You're gonna have to take a day and do marketing. You're gonna have to take a day and do beats. You're gonna have to take a day and reply to all of your comments. That's kinda that's 
that's one thing I kind of get stuck on because I like I like interacting with people because those interactions, other people are going to see those other, other people are going to see the interactions with other people that you had. And that's going to make them more inclined to reply and use real words instead of just the fire emoji, you know, they, and they see you actually comment, commenting and engaging with with other people. That's going to create more engagement for you and cause them to comment on your comment, you know. It's really about building relationships, having fun with people. This is a, this is a, this is a social industry, a social site. Well, I'm mainly talking about Instagram. I use Instagram for my marketing, um, and I'm about to. I can't say that. Mm, I'm gonna save that for later. I'm not gonna say that to you guys yet, but it actually has worked out even better than instagram i oh my goodness i will reveal that secret later and y'all are gonna be y'all are gonna be on game i promise you because no other producer is doing it i haven't seen it yet i'm doing a i'm doing a few things that producers aren't doing yet yes especially this i'm catering to the audience i know there are people out there that really want to learn how to make music and i'm i'm willing to help I'm willing to help. I don't mind at all. So one helpful thing I've noticed is putting an automatic message in for, let's say if someone messages you, you could put in your software out here. It's many different ones, but I mainly use Facebook because Facebook is directly, Facebook will directly integrate with Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram. So I have a pre-type message that goes out when someone sends me a message that message automatic it triggers that message and it goes straight out to them reminding them to follow me and turn on my notifications when like if you send the message if you send the message to me right now you'll see it on instagram at swear beats if you send a message to me you'll see that automatic message that kind of gets people engaged as well they're like oh man he replied real fast but um, actually I will, I'll, I'll see that that message already went out and then I'll come and see what you said. And then I can, we can engage from there. We can continue the conversation from there. I really do like to engage with people and try to help if, if I can, the difference between marketing and distribution marketing is pretty much what we just talked about. Distribution is something well. Let's see here. Boom. I use a distribution service called Song Trader. You can use you can use pretty much well there there as far as distribution goes, I use a uh oh god, I can't all in. Oh hold on. Y'all, I don't forgot my password. What in the hell? Come on now. <sighs> Crap. Song trader. Let me in. I know y'all hear me knocking, bro. Quit playing. Oh my gosh. Lord have mercy. What you mean? Okay, finally got logged in. Um, this is the song site we use for distribution. Well, some of us use. Um, up here at the top, you can see how it's spelled: S O N G T R A D R. Um, let's see here. I have 100 songs. This, this is basically like a, like a library. This is one of the most beneficial sites you could actually use. To be honest, they upload your music to Spotify and Apple music and any other major strat, major streaming platform that you may not be aware of, but they have network connections that'll put your music in those. You don't have to know them. All you have to know is Song Trader. They'll do the rest for you. They they distribute, that's that's part of their job. And over here, you can see the earnings. I already took some of the money out, so that's just what's been calculated for, uh, let's see, they sent the check, or I 
yeah, they send the checks and and then let's see. Mm. This is just one way you could learn how to create that passive income. So we'll go all the way down to 83018 and I got paid 5 bucks for adding my this is a very old song and it sounds terrible. I don't think I would actually let anybody listen to that because my work sounds so much different now. But as you can see, they paid $5 for it. Why not? Um, and then you could just see it just calculating over the course of time. And if I had more songs in here, which at the time, I think I had like 20 songs. I have 101 now because I just recently uploaded more songs. <laughs> And uh, let's see, they paid, I probably had like one song in there. And I, it recently got chosen to be wherever they decided to use it at. And then that was the payout for that. And then this is just little upfront funds because you got back in, back in royalties that come in. So this is just a little upfront money. The big money comes in on the back end. So when it's like a TV show, these get cho these songs get chosen for like tv shows commercials all that great stuff that's where your big money comes in at on the back end when you're using your pro's your performance rights organizations which is uh only in the united states well the only two in the united states are ascap and bmi you have csec for you know other countries like uh the uk and uh let's see russia all that actually i think well People, that's the only one in other countries that, you know, registers foreign music is CSAC. But for the U.S., if you're in the U.S., choose BMI or ASCAP. And BMI, you can sign up for the songwriter. To be a songwriter on BMI, it's, let's see, it's free, actually. And to have your own publishing is 150, your own publishing company. Like saying who put that that work of art out there. By publishing, I mean like your own label, basically. You are your own label, and that costs 150 bucks for BMI. But it, to be a songwriter, it's free. And you will need to be a songwriter, registered songwriter, to really get the fun. That's that's one thing I'm going back and working on because I realized how much money I was I was missing out on. That could have been calculated over time, but I'm actually adding the rest of it because I have a catalog of over... 250 beats I think yeah actually yeah it's over 250 beats and this is I just recently uploaded 80 songs so and it's not even showing here yet this is the last day right here it's showing from March oh no dang it's showing from January of this year and I earned one cent from something in November because when you get paid by your PROs, your performance rights organizations, when you get paid by BMI or ASCAP, they're three months behind. So it's going to be three months before you actually see some money coming in. So, I mean, this is not a get quick rich scheme, but if you have the music, you can go ahead and get it chosen and be earning money while you're doing something else. This is passive income. Residual income. Let's see. Back distribution monetization is what I want to show you guys so I have lots of music on YouTube and I only have 90 song 99 songs opted in like I said I have a catalog of over 250 beats y'all see I got some work to do <laughs> I really got work to do you can submit your your uh, these are submission opportunities down here they're all listed when you put your music on TikTok. that's how these artists are getting paid they're adding their music to these libraries and um, I'll, and these aren't just the only libraries that that are on this site. This is a site where a lot of music supervisors come and and try to listen to to new music to try to put to try to sync. This is all this this is is sync licensing. And yep, they will distribute your music. We talked about that. And here here are songs that I'm not gonna play them because I don't want to get flagged or anything. But you can see from the from the listing here that these songs were recently chosen to be on a TV show, commercial, a library, or something. A music supervisor went through here and chose these songs. 
and it's they they're always on here. They're looking for new music all times. And here's some more, some music wanted. And so if you have music that can that fits these descriptions, then you could submit. And it does take credits, but they give you credit every month. And you see, I will get some, I will get 250 new credits on March 13th, which is right around the corner. So I'm about to get 250 more to add here. And then when you submit, it costs, oh, that one's actually free. So they have your, the, the how many credits it costs to submit to these opportunities. Of course, you do have to pay because these guys are busy. If, if you didn't pay, their email will be so full of music. And most of the time, the free music is, is, is not good music. They're not ready to be licensed because they're not mastered or something of that nature. If your music's not mastered, don't even submit it to, don't even submit it. Don't even, yeah, don't submit your music here if your music's not mixed and mastered because that they have a very good ear. Um, they... I actually had recently met a music supervisor pretty much um, and it's nice to have that contact because he told me the only thing was that was wrong with my music is that I needed to bring it up a little more everything else was fine and that was really great news to me and so I took that advice and now I I since I've taken that advice since I took that advice I have more opportunities just jumping out jumping out at me because they love the way that it's it's been mixed and mastered you know that was the only thing he had to say about mine and that that really meant a lot but i do offer mixing and masters mastering services if you i will actually put that link down below as well but this is my link tree and it'll it doesn't want to show okay cool i don't feel like logging in <laughs> Pretty much, if you just if you were to go to my Instagram and try to click that that link, it should work. I don't know why it's not working at the moment. I should try it on my phone. But all of those, all of these, plus a little more, is in there. If you go to my profile and click there, let's see if I can try to log in on my phone don't know if you guys will be able to see it but I'll try do, 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 do. and it, then it should take you to this screen here and those are all of the things that are listed pretty much there linktree is a very that's another thing as well linktree is very helpful so if you you can post one link on your on your Instagram and that will be you know here but you want that link to at least link you to that's why they call it link tree you want that one link it's like a seed but you want that one link to link you to all of the other things that you have going on so you can check you can go to my instagram and check and hit that first option is to join my email list and then i do consultations mastering services my beat store spotify if you want to follow me on youtube subscribe hit the notification bell and audio mac and then there's a nice little special opportunity to work with or get seen by um the 85 south show i do have that special opportunity there if anybody is interested you don't have to be an artist all you have to do is download a beat download the beat provided and then rap to it with certain hashtags that's pretty much how you guys get seen and that's my special offer to you guys if you want to get seen and get reposted on the 85 South Show page, that, that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do. Oh, that, uh, the special offer, special opportunity is the Two Hands Challenge opportunity. You can go check that out if you click the link here on my Instagram, and I'll try to actually put it below as well, or try to link it somewhere in this video. But to draw, to get people's attention, you need to know how to get their attention. You need to know what gets their attention. And one thing to do is do something that's popular to drive traffic to your page. If you don't if you're not participating in anything, then it okay, say say you're over here to the left. 
well, this is my left hand. I don't. I think it looks the other way around for you guys. But if you if you're over here in your own bubble, and there's a group of people over here having a festival in this hashtag, you know nothing about what's going on over here because you're in your own bubble. So let's say you see what's going on over here in this hashtag. You start posting content in this hashtag. That festival of people are now drawn to you if you, if you have good content. That's basically how this works. It's super, super easy if you know what you're doing. It's only frustrating because people don't know what they're doing. They don't, I don't they're creating they're making more work for themselves that's what's being that's that's what's frustrating for people i've i've been through every single frustration stage tear nose i've had so many nose but i had one good yes that's i mean i've had yeses too but i've i've had more nos than i had yeses but i didn't focus on the people who said no i focused on the people that said yes i only focused on the people who who care about music, who make music, who are interested in music, who are interested in making music. You know, those are the only type of people that I'm surrounding myself around. And since, and that makes it easier. You, you got to know your audience. If you're sharing your music with people that don't like what you're doing, then of course you're not going to get any, get any views or likes or be able to comment and be able to really interact with people of course you're not going to because they don't like that type of stuff you know like we were speaking about earlier distribution we've covered prices let's see as far as pricing goes that's pretty much up to you but one thing i will say it depends on what your music sounds like like you may think this sounds amazing this is great this is awesome but if you don't know where you are musically you're gonna be creating even more work for yourself one way to find out how 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 you're doing musically is really listen to other people's music like man i want my drums to hit that hard or man i want my voice to sound like like theirs oh man they don't use as much auto tune as i do or you know, just really trying to find your sound because you already have an idea of what you want your music to sound like. Everyone's different. Don't worry about people saying this person sounds like this person or he trying to be the next so-and-so. Like, no, you are you. You are unique. The world needs to see it. Point blank, period. The world needs to see you. What? And basically, people are looking for the new, the new talent. They're talent scouts out all the time. Trust me. They looking. And is is it's basically showing you're basically showing what you could bring to the table you know if you don't have if you don't have any followers or if you if you don't know how to handle the audience that you have then no one's gonna give you an offer really to be honest so you want your social media to look presentable so if this business page says, Hey, go check out this person. Then they come, they, when they actually check out your page, they actually have something to look at. Give people something to look at when you, when you're making your content, if your content looks boring, your page looks boring. No one's going to stay. No one's going to follow you. No one's going to comment. Major thing that I want to stress marketing, <clears throat> excuse me. Marketing is 90% of this right here. Because you can be making the hottest tracks in the world. You can have five number one hits on your hard drive. But if it's on your hard drive, how is it going to get to the billboard? If no one knows you're making these hits, you get what I'm saying? If nobody knows you're making hits, then that's, that's going to cause frustration for you. You have to know how to market. Making music is only 10%. Marketing and networking are the two biggest two 90 and 90 i know that equal 180 but hey is <laughs> is in the other the last little 10 percent. this this is a whole equal of 200 percent, which is something that we can get to get into another time but that's 
the percentages how you register your songs on BMI it's to the 200 percent of the song so like say the producer gets a hundred percent and then the artist gets a hundred percent but it's a little different because if that artist is signed then there is you have to work out something with the publishing on the song because there is a you get paid two ways you get paid for writing the song you get com you get paid for producing the song because it's like strands of dna coming together basically so everybody knows what a dna strand looks like if you don't it looks like a what do you call that thing a cortex corvix i forget but it's i would draw it but you know what i mean two snakes i guess you could say like the little medical snake thing going up but anyway it's the artist the producer now the artist can do acapella but ain't nobody buying no acapella acapella boy ain't nobody buying no acapella bro but you have music music gets licensed all the time because it's it's what really drives the emotion the notes are driving emotions they can use that all the time nobody can't really use acapellas so artists really need producers more than they think they do to be honest that's just being real because it takes two to really make that song even more than just what this person did just what the producer did with the artist it will sound better but the artist kind of there's kind of a for what most of them don't understand this information and that's that's why there's always a clash in the in the music industry because artists and producers aren't on the same page about things. But if we were to get this on the same page, it'll basically just be going like this. Um, the pricing, I still have not I told you guys that. But I charge $20 for, well, I did show you that actually. I charge $20 for MP3 and $40 for my WAV files. And the WAV files are a little more crisp, cut, clean, clean cut is basically what you hear when you turn on Spotify. People don't know the difference between those like most of the time when you hear something on youtube that's an mp3 if you go to spotify and turn on something turn on some music most of those are in waves because those files sound the best and that's what's really going to give you that those are ones that you can really hear the mastered effects on like if you turn your radio all the way up on spotify it's going to be louder than this song, if you were to try to turn it all the way up on YouTube, if you play your music from Spotify, it's a whole lot louder. Pandora, like most of the streaming services have the better quality sounds, sound, the better quality sounds, you know, it because it's a streaming service. They want, they want it to sound the best. They want to give you the best experience as the listener. So they're only going to accept the best type of file. It's best to submit waves when possible. If they ask for MP3s because those files are smaller, if they ask for them, then we'll just go with that. When you're sending emails and wanting people to listen to your music, I would suggest using an MP3 because it's way smaller than the file. The, the wave will take up every lick of space in that one email. And you're only allowed, I think, well, for Gmail, it's 20 gigabytes. And you're only allowed like 20 gigabytes. That one wave could be bigger than 20 megabytes that's why we send mp3s they're like in the kilobyte range or megabyte range that's those are the one because you can send multiple ones if you're sending you know something that was in kilobytes instead of gigabytes basically when should you rev up or rev down your pricing i'm not an artist but if i were i would raise up my pricing when I could pack, uh, if someone heard my name and they were putting out flyers, if I could pack that place out, that's when you know it's time to raise your prices. Like if you ain't packing no place out, who gonna, who gonna pay that price there, buddy? They mentioning you, they're promoting you, and then when you come, you can't sell the place out. They're gonna be less likely to ask you to come back for that, you know? Because you too high and you ain't really popping like that. So you you, you gotta know where you are. Pretty much. If if people are rocking to your music, that's how you know you can, you know, start raising the price as an artist. Now, as a producer, 
you want to be consistent with your prices basically but i am definitely about to raise mine soon to be honest that little 20 and 40 it's cool but i know what's about to happen so i'm going to go ahead and raise my price it's not crazy i still want to make it affordable for people you know i'm probably just going to do double 40 for the i'm just raising it up 20 dollars both of them so that that'll probably just be it i'm just going up by half on my everything i'm just taking it up i have i'm just charging half more what i do now you know that's all and because i want i want i want to have some consistency with my pricing because people know they already know my name now they know my prices you know i want i want i'm basically a one one stop shop one stop shop that's why i put that there because that's pretty much i have pretty much everything you need have consultations if you want to learn a little more you can hit that that link tree link if you want to learn more you want some one-on-one -on -one time you want me to look at your social media page to see you know how to promote and what gets people's attention how you get those likes and all of that how you get those views what hashtags to post in how often because some of them might hit some of them might not you know so you just want to you have to try to learn and do testing pretty much you have to learn and do testing see what works a and b testing is really what you want to test out and i think i have mine pretty much down to a to a dot like i'm super focused on it like i i pretty much get how the algorithm works now and now with me knowing that information i'm about to skyrocket because i've i've figured it out like for youtube and for instagram but if you want any more help on that you can go to my consultation link in my link tree you'll see the constant con consultation there as well and then that last one how much to charge for a live in person you know we just did talk about that if you're not packing out a place you really should be doing that show for free to get matter of fact if it is if they if if it's your first time there you should probably do it for free as an artist because nobody knows you you're trying to get known like nobody not gonna pay you ain't nobody matter of fact take this interaction y'all ain't paid to get to know me y'all ain't paying to get to know me y'all are paying for the experience to the, the information you know but as far as like uh from an artist standpoint, no venue is gonna pay you and nobody knows you. That's crazy. And they haven't heard your music. They don't know if your music is pop or flop. And if it's a flop, that's a L on them. That's that's a loss. They they didn't earn any money from you being there. They actually lost money. Cause people left after you was rapping and singing or whatever, you know? If your if your music's not dope, you can't capture people's attention, then there you shouldn't be charging. You should do those free shows, see if people rocking with the music, go ahead and get some feedback on the song, really listen to the feedback, don't get mad. But of course, you have to know what's feedback, what's what's constructive criticism, and what's hate. Most people don't even know how to differentiate the two, because some people are, some people will get constructive criticism and they don't know how to take it. You know, they just get upset, but it's, it's really, it's really up to you on how far you want to it's really up to you how far you want to go with this but i appreciate you guys for watching i am swerve beats skirt skirt swerve on them out swerve on